Right, so this is the second examples class for mathematical analysis. And the questions for this examples class are on question sheet two. And your first task is, in question five, there are three different sets, A, B, and C, and you have to work out which are the non-interior points in these three sets. So you need to find out what nint A, nint B, and nint C are. Now, I'm hoping you remember the definition, but I will just remind you quickly that uh, the non-interior points in a set are those points which are in the set, but not in the interior of the set. So you're not allowed to be in nint of A unless you're actually a point of A, which is not in the interior of A. So it's got to be in the set A, but it mustn't be in the interior of A. So it's, you're going to be looking at points sort of at the edge of A, which we'll formalize a bit later using the word boundary. And, and boundary comes a bit later in this class. So it's those boundary points of A which are not, um, well, it's those boundary points of A which are in A. And those are the points in nint of A. And the same for B and C. Now, you should probably do sketches for A and B. You probably don't have to sketch C, because first of all, it's in three dimensions. And uh, it gets harder once you get to three dimensions, and even harder when you get to four or higher. Uh, I don't recommend trying to do four dimensional sketches unless you're very, very good at it. Uh, so you can sketch C if you want. But no justification is required in this question. This is a without justification question. But I still recommend doing sketches when you can, because it makes it easier to see what the answers are. And remember that convincing sketches in one and two dimensions actually will count as quite good justification. There'll often be sufficient justification. A sufficiently convincing sketch in one or two dimensions is usually sufficient justification for statements about interior points and non-interior points in this module. So there are the three sets. And uh, we'll give you a chance to think about the non-interior points. We'll come around and see how you're getting on. I'll pause the recording there. OK, so you've had a, a good chance at those. And I'll now uh, run through these. I won't do the full sketch for the set A and A complement, which I think you can do by now. We've done lots of examples. But it is worth doing the sketch for A. So as an additional exercise, then, sketch the set A. But I'll give you for free that the interior points of A, one doesn't count because one isn't in A, two does count because it is in A, four is in, but five is out, six and seven are in and they count. So it's just got four points. So that's the non-interior points of A. And if you do the sketch, you'll see that that's fairly clear. For set B, I do recommend doing the sketch. So for set B, we'll sketch the set, those x, y, so that x, y is left root of 1. You don't have to do justification, but it's always good practice to sketch as many sets as you can. And people often get this one wrong. So let's have a look. That's not very good. Let's try that again. Right, so here's x, here's y. Let me put uh, a few points in. Some of these points are not relevant, some of them are. Let's see, we'll have uh, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Um, I didn't need those two, so. So 
So here we have a very well-known hyperbola, which you can probably draw better than me, especially when I'm using this machine. It's got asymptotes at the axes. Go through these points here, at 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 1. This is uh, x, y equals 1, x, y equals 1. And uh, the region we want is the stuff in between. So I'll just shade all that stuff in between. This is the set B. This is x, y less root to 1. And I'll just show you what B complement looks like. Oh, so B is the shaded region. It's shaded in red, but including the boundary curves. There's really only one curve, but we'll call it boundary curves. And then B complemented out here, so then you get a dotted boundary out here. Here's B complement. You weren't asked to sketch that yet, but that comes up in another question, so we'll do it. Uh, here's another bit of B complement. Uh, B complement, of course, is where x, y is greater than 1. So you're left with the one between the, these two curved bits. Um, and uh, note that includes two whole quadrants where x, y is actually negative. If you didn't get that, you should think about what you've sketched and why it doesn't agree with what I've sketched, because a lot of people get this one wrong. OK, so we've done the sketch. And now you say, which points are sort of on the frontier or boundary of B um, and are in B? Well, in this case, the points that are at the edges of the set B are clearly the points on these two boundary bits of boundary curve. And since they're included in B, they count as non-interior points. So the whole of those are in, and you get an into B, which didn't require any justification, so you could have just written this down. It's those points x, y in R squared, such that x, y is equal to exactly y. which consists of the two pieces shown. Um, before I move on, any question about that before I move on and tell you about C? Any questions about B or A? OK, I won't sketch C. You can sketch it if you like. It's, it's just the ball of radius 2 in disguise. So C is actually equal to the closed ball of radius 2 centered on the origin in R cubed. Because x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to norm of x, y, z all squared. So it's just a standard closed ball. And um, from the notes, or from a sketch, or, or it's obvious, um, the interior of C is the open ball centered on the origin, which is equal to x, y, z in uh, R cubed, such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than, less than 4. And the non-interior points 
is everything else in C, which is the surface of the sphere. So that's x, y, z in r cubed. So that's x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2. And no justification is required, but you can think about how you justify that stuff if you want to. Yes, is there a, a question? No? Any questions on any of that? If not, we'll move on to a somewhat similar second question. So this time you have to say what the interiors are. I've already told you one of them. Of the same sets, and what are the interiors of their complements? So you might want to sketch the complements. I've done one of those. And as an addition, I also suggest also find um, the nints of the complements as well. Because that will be useful in a bit. So look at the sets, find their interiors. You've already got the sketches probably, so that'll help. Then look at the complements. You'll have to sketch those as well. Find their interiors, find their ninteriors. And uh, that will put you ready for the remaining questions. OK, so I'll pause the recording there. And we'll see how you get on with that. OK, so I'll run through the answers to these. But first, let me uh, say, uh, sorry, I wrote a two where I should have said a four before. Uh, the norm, it, when the norm is two, the sum of the squares is four. And that's, that's what I did wrong. Sorry about that. OK, so what are these interiors and interiors? Well, we can write these down without justification, and I, you can base it all on the diagrams and the sketches that you've hopefully drawn by now. So keeping an eye on what the set A is, we have the interior of A is equal to uh, everything is round brackets, 1, 2, together with... 4, 5, together with 6, 7. The interior of A complement is everything else in the real line with round brackets, so excluding the endpoints again. So the interior of A complement goes from minus infinity up to 1 exclusive, and then you have uh, from 2 up to 4 exclusive, and then 5 up to 6 exclusive, and then 7 up to infinity exclusive. And uh, the non-interior points in A complement were the, uh, let's see, the, the bits at the edge of A that weren't in A, because they are in A complement, and that gives you 1, and five, and that's it. Now for B, if you remember how that picture looked, we saw that the complement of B had the dotted boundary rather than a solid boundary. So B complement was in fact an open set, and all points of B complement are interior to it. So Here's what we get. Uh, remember, b was equal to xy in r, squared, uh, in r squared, so that xy less root of 1. Uh, the interior b is those xy in r squared, so that's xy strictly less than 1. Uh, which is b take away. Uh, it's an interior. We knew that the interior of B was where um, XY was equal to 1. 
the complement was equal to x y r squared. So that's x y is greater than one. And this is actually op an open set. So what we get from that is that uh, the interior of B complement is equal to B complement, which is equal to x, y, and r squared, for which x, y is greater than 1. And the nid of B complement is empty. And in fact, in the terminology which we just introduced in lectures, since B complement is open, that means B is a closed set. Not that you need that in this question. Remember, a closed set is one where the complement is open. So that's uh, worth noticing. Now, oh, I didn't quite do what I intended. Bring that back. Sorry about that. OK, try that again. Now let's have C. C, remember, was the closed ball radius 2 centered on the origin in R cubed. And I said it's standard, it's in the lectures, that the interior of C then is the open ball. And uh, C complement, which is always a nuisance um, because of the letters, and it always makes me wish I hadn't used the letter C. C complement is uh, those x, y, z in R cubed such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is strictly greater than 4. Now this is actually an open set. Which you should be able to convince yourself of quite quickly. Actually, it's standard from some, stuff, some of the stuff we've done in lectures. Um, so the interior of C complement is equal to C complement. Um, and another way of writing it, by the way, is uh, x in R cubed, so that this time it really is 2. Those points where the norm is strictly greater than 2 is where the sum of the squares is greater than 4. And I think I've got it right this time. But correct me if I've got it wrong. Now, um, and nin to C complement is empty because C complement is open and C complement is open that means C is closed worth noticing ok any questions on those Interiors and interiors. Before we move on to a slightly more abstract bit. Okay, so our next task is to have a look at the boundary of a set. Now we're only going to use it informally in lectures, but we will do it carefully in this class, just so that you know what the boundary really is. So the idea is that to be at the boundary of a set, you surely mustn't be in the interior of it. So you mustn't be at the interior of it. But you also shouldn't be in the interior of the complement, or else you'll be miles away from the set. So if you want to be at the edge of the set, you shouldn't be in the interior of the set, and you shouldn't be in the interior of the complement. So we'll, we'll define the boundary to mean throw away everything that's in either the interior of A 
or the interior of A complement. So you just take R to the D, take away interior of A, union with interior of A complement, and look at what's left, and you call that the boundary of the set A, which we use with this partial A notation. There's other notation available. You can also call it frontier, that sort of thing. And your task, oh yeah, the Morgan's Laws gives you this formula for it as well, though that isn't necessarily particularly useful, but it's worth knowing that it's the same as the complement of the interior intersected with the complement of the interior of the complement. You might want to look at one of the enthusiasts' question sheets questions to see the sort of things you can get to there. And uh, now it says, using Venn diagrams or otherwise, prove the following set equalities. And what do I mean by using set, uh, Venn diagrams? Well, let me, because we haven't got much time yet, let me get you started by noting, here's the whole of R to the D. I'll chop R to the D in half as A and A complement. And now, what you do is you split A and A complement up into two as well, using their interior and their interiors, and that will give you R to the D as a union of four pieces, and you should then be able to read the result off. But don't make the interior look too small. I suggest chopping these two halves in half, which I'll do in a couple of minutes anyway, but let yeah, you think about how to do that, and then you'll have decomposed R to the D into four pieces, and you should be able to read off those three equalities. Okay, I'll pause the recording there, and we'll see. So... I've now finished off this diagram for you. These four pieces are disjoint. None of them touch any of the others. Remember that nothing in A can be in A complement as well, and nothing in A complement can be in A. An int of A is a subset of A, and an int of A complement is a subset of A complement. So they don't touch. Well, they don't overlap, anyway. Um, a is the disjoint union of the two pieces on the left. A complement is a disjoint union of the two pieces on the right. And R to the D is a disjoint union of these four pieces. Now, if you take the complement of one of these pieces, you get the union of the other three. Now, the union of the two on the right gives you a complement, which gives you the a complement here, and then you've got the nint that gives you the nint there. So if you take the complement of int a, taking those three gives you this equation here. And similarly for this one, um, for the boundary, the boundary says, throw away the interior of A and the interior of A complement. So you have to get rid of interior of A and get rid of the interior of A complement and look at what's left. What's left is two pieces, an int of A and an int of A complement. And that's what's left in R to the D when you've done it that. So the remaining bits on that sheet of you to look at, I will put solutions on the web, but just before we stop, does anybody think they know what the boundary of the set Q in the real numbers is. Anybody, any idea what the boundary of Q is? Well, don't worry if you haven't got it. We'll get the solutions on the web a bit later. So if anybody does have an idea. Okay, it's worth thinking about. 